Now, many of you will be asking, what on earth is that? Well, we have cranes here, we have pumps here, we have a substation there, we have EV chargers over there, we have cabinets here. The only thing we haven't got is a big hole at the bottom. So if you want to know where that's going, I'm Dave, keep watching. Now, I always thought that these, this is Electric Highway. This date back to about 10 years or more when it was actually Electric Highway before it became GridServe. Uh, these now really showing their age. First of all, these are not the original ones. The original ones with Electric Highway would have been even smaller than this. And when GridServe took over, merged, whatever it is they do, uh, they did an upgrade of all of these. So they went up to either 50 or 60 kilowatts uh, shared between two bays. So genuine two bays here. Um, but even these are now starting to show their age. This one here, uh, there's no lights on on the, uh, the uh, contactless charger, and we've got an out of order, sorry for the inconvenience. These are falling apart at a rapid rate of knots. And even the uh, fast chargers here, they're supposed to have a flap on them. Now, it's not a problem with the rain. They don't suffer from rain. You can have torrential rain. These still work very safely. But it's all just starting to fall apart. And that's why the last time we were here, about a year ago, we noticed these. So there's 12 chargers here. And these are really interesting because these are drive through. It's more like a petrol pump arrangement where you just pull in behind the car in front and you can both charge or plug in or pull in at the same time. So uh, these are really quite interesting. And we started seeing one or two of the Teslas copying this drive-through arrangement. So with these here, these are great for everyone. These are up to, up to 350. They were really weird sharing arrangements so they can provide more power than they actually state. It's quite unusual. We talked to the engineers, not sure I quite understand that, but 350, so that means anything on the road today, you can actually chain, charge at pretty much full speed. And these are future proof for the future. And just a message of warning for anyone who's got a smaller budget EV, which might only have an 80 kilowatt charging rate, perfectly safe. You do not have to worry about what you plug it into. Your car will decide what it needs and only take that. So if you plug your car, which charges at 80 or 90 kilowatts, like a Renault 5, plug it in here to 350, it will only take 80 or 90 kilowatts. Now, many of you might be asking, if all these chargers, they've got 12 grid surf chargers, 350 kilowatts, they're all up and running, they've been up and running for about a year, why on earth are they digging up holes once again and taking it all into total chaos. So they have plenty of power here. They've got a massive big drill. They've got all the drill bits. They've got the crane for lifting it. They've got a massive big hole down there. All they're gonna do is drill a hole from that machine right the way through to the northbound side of the motorway. So let's go over to the northbound and see what's happening over there. Now I found something really interesting here. We've traveled across the motorway bridge. We did have a little bit of a stop off, I must admit, for a little bit of a uh, a bit of food break. Uh, but we come over here, we're northbound now on the M6, and we have pretty much exactly the same as we have on the southbound. Uh, there's two chargers there. These are the 60 kilowatt dual bay, one Shadamo and CCS on one, two CCS on the other. Uh, we also have here the, uh, the fast chargers. And these are not bad value. These are 22 kilowatts for those cars who can take it. And they're also 49p, which is a lot cheaper than the 89p they are here. So that's what we got here. But this is still really pathetic compared to what's over the other side. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna have a look up here and see what's happening, but not yet happened. And what we have here is a mirror image in many ways to the other side. They will be installing grid serve chargers here, the 350 kilowatts. And if it's the same size as the other side, uh, there'll be 12 of them as well. And that's a nice location. It's out the end of the car park, so it's well out the way, so you don't get icing. So that's all great, apart from one thing. And that thing is the DNO. And we saw this at Birch Services, where it was about a year before the DNO got round to connecting the chargers. It really is one of the big holdups in the whole of the country when you're putting in chargers. They've actually avoided that here. Now there's a normal procedure when you're putting in chargers. You need power. And that normally comes from the DNO, which is the distribution network operator. And that's part of the national grid. 
and their responsibility is to take the power from the grid at about 400,000 volts and bring it down to what they can actually use here on the chargers. And that'll be down to a substation and a transformer and then down to the individual cabinets and then down to the individual chargers themselves. That's not happening here. And this is something completely different that we've just found out over the other side. So we're going to be filming there in a second, but let's see what's happening here. Here, they're not talking to the DNO. So before I explain what's going on here, on the northbound side, we actually need to go over to the southbound side. So let's go. Apologies for any motors you can hear running in the background. This is an active site, but let's just run through what's happening here. The main bit of it over there is the pump. This is a massive pump and it will be pumping water and slurry and sand and all sorts in there. And that's going to act as a lubricant for the drill that's going through, but it'll also act as washing away the debris that the drill releases. So it's a dual purpose. So that will pump very high pressure water and slurry through to here. This is on a slope. And this means this is where the drill is going to go. So you'll get drill bits. You can see them here. They are about 30 feet long uh, and they've got screws on either end. So they just screw together. So what's going to happen is one drill bit is going to be placed on there. There'll be a head on it, which is the drilling head. And that head will have the water feeding into it. And we're getting in the way here. So uh, we're OK here. We're safe. <laughs> So that drill will be taking it, drill bit will be taking in the water and the slurry. So that means that that will be lubricated. So you can see there the primary drill. That's the length of the drill, about 25, 30 feet. That will be the bit that's getting the water and the slurry pumped into it. What they do is they'll use the crane to lift that one up. They'll put it on top there. And at the top of this ramp, there's the drill that's going to trill drill turn the drill bit and that will go down and it's going down into that hole so they've dug this absolutely massive hole and this one is the one that's going across to the other side of the motorway this is a long distance so as they start drilling the drill bit will slide down and start drilling down there and every time it goes in they'll just get one of these drill bits these are about 30 feet long and that will just screw on the end and they'll do that one and they do one after the other until they get down there. Now, it's not easy to get an angle down and then bring it up the other side. So what's going to happen now is when they get down to the correct depth and the depth here is enough to get under the motorway without affecting the traffic in any way whatsoever, that drill will turn horizontal and they'll still pump it down, but the drill bit will turn horizontal. And so the future drilling will be that bit. And they can follow the drill bit with GPS and all sorts of lasers and everything. And they will just keep on drilling and drilling and drilling until they get right over the other side of the carriageway, past all the cars, past all the embankment. They're aiming, in my opinion, somewhere up there from where I've seen the uh, charges on the other side, but that's entirely up to them. So it will just keep on feeding through and then at a certain point on the other side they will almost certainly try and bring that uphill and that will come out into the compound that we filmed uh, which is where the charges are going. At that point the easiest way of getting the cable through is to attach the cable to that end to the drill bit which has popped through they will tie it on, not with uh, zip ties or anything, but it's proper security. But then they will start bringing these uh, drill bits back through 30 feet at a time. And as that comes back through, it will be dragging the cable with it. So the cable will almost certainly come from that side across to here. And they will pull the cable up here and then they will tail it off in that hole there. And at that point, all they need then is the electricians and they will need to, ch to connect that into here, which is the substation. Now, I'm assuming GridServe have got a certain amount of common sense because if they have, they will have made sure that that substation 
is absolutely capable of running 12 charges on this side, pulling that cable through and pulling tw um, c connecting 12 on the other side. So a total of 24 charges, uh, all at 350 kilowatts. And that will all be connected here. The normal course of events would be to just get the DNO in and connect another substation that side. I would guess it's a lot dearer, but I would guess it's a huge amount more uh, waiting for them to get round to it because the DNOs are often the big holdup. Here, they'll go as fast as they want. So we've got lorries queuing up behind us here. There's all sorts going on here. So what's going to happen here? We're talking about three to four weeks to get this drill from there over to the compound on the other side, three to four weeks. At that point, they need two lots of electricians. One is to connect that into that substation, and the other one is to connect that cable into the cabinets, and they'll go directly into the cabinets because this will already have cut the voltage down to the voltage that they need. So they don't need a substation that side. Might be totally wrong, they might actually put one down because uh, direct current is always a, a very lossy one. Uh, there's big losses uh, with inefficiencies if you transmit direct current. Uh, so what they might do here is they might want to transmit it across at a much higher voltage, uh, certainly way above 450. It could actually go three or 400,000, whatever they've got in there, take that across, then put a small substation in and bring it in anyhow. That's entirely up to them, but this is what's happening here. They will either get a substation over there or this will be plugged straight into the cabinets. This is much, much quicker than trying to get a DNO out here to charge, uh, to connect to uh, the charges that are going in over there. So it's nowhere near yet, hasn't even started, but that cable is on its way here. And somewhere in this compound, that cable will pop through underground with this drill mole or whatever you like to call it, water jet, the whole lot. And that cable then will be pulled through and that will go into the individual cabinets and that will go straight into the chargers. So a much, much simplified installation here. Don't need DNOs, there's power over there. Don't need uh, substations or transformers, that's all over there. All they're doing is just bringing that one big cable across here and that will power the site. It's a great way of doing it. We first saw it in Sunbatch quite a while ago where they were talking about one of their methods of getting the cable across the motorway was underneath it. Another one was over the top of the bridge. Uh, so this is obviously one they've chosen here to go underneath the motorway. And will it work? Uh, I'm told that if it disrupts the traffic in any way, they've failed. So we're pretty certain this is going to work first time. Now, isn't it amazing what you find when you get out on the road? So please subscribe, hit the notification bell if you would like, become a member and we can get out and do more of these. But we're going to go now and see what else we can find today because it's an absolute blockbuster of a day so far. I'm Dave.